Hello folks and welcome back to the Panzer Edelstahl edition. Now you might reasonably ask yourself, well, isn't Edelstahl going against the channel sponsor, Rust? And it it is, but you know, I figure Rust sponsors enough of my vehicles that I'll try to have an unsponsored one just to look a little bit um I don't want to look like I'm um, making too much of a killing out of this whole thing, you know. But anyway, have made some good progress on the Panzer recently. So I thought, uh, what better way to lose more subscribers than attach a eight-year-old, nine-year-old GoPro to my head and go crawling around under the Panzer and then dump all of that raw, unedited footage onto your favorite platform. So, there we are, folks. That is what we are going to be doing today for you. So, if you are queasy, you suffer from seasickness or something like that, then the only thing I can recommend is immediately pause this video, go up to the search bar, type funny cats and press enter and you will be safely taken away from the coming nightmare. However, if you uh, wish to see my antics under the vehicle and get a little bit of an update on progress, courtesy of the GoPro, not my head, the GoPro, that thing, not this thing, uh, then do stick around. Um, we are finally getting nearer to uh, getting the vehicle powered up again. I know it's been an epic journey. Um, and as I said in the past episode, I guess part of that is because I'm more kind of taking my time with the things that I would have just rushed through. And, you know, instead of um, thinking my way through them, I'd have just welded something or cable tied something or jubilee clipped something and that would have been it done. So. Let's go have a look at the car, and then, assuming you survive that, uh, we'll come back for some closing comments. Now the question is, is this actually working? Oh, it is. Yay. All right. Right. Time for some bad video. So the mission now is to see if we can install our new bracket. It's raining again. Alright. Let's get in. Check for leaks as well. And it's hopefully there's no more leaks. Uh, oh, wait now. Ow. I think I just smacked the camera off something. Did I smack the camera off something? Uh, no more leaks. Yay. All right. Well. Pew. Let's get in. Ooh, ah. All right. I don't know anything about anything, but. All right. So, I'm going to change this bracket what we're going to do next, I think, here. Alright. So, now, if I go like that, go like that, yeah, that is the definition of dumb. Now, should be able to slide that off there. Oof, okay. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay. All right. Now, we'll be able to take that bracket off here. I'll undo that screw here. Oh, 
Oh yeah, okay. Wow, that's easy. Alright. So. Sure it won't be this easy in real life. Okay, now we need to put this clamp. I don't know if you guys are seeing any of this or whether it's all just a blur, but I don't know. Ow. Panzer! Do not, um, nicked attacking. Nicked. Let me get my CHs right. Okay. Alright, um. Ah, stop. Head clamp. Stop coming off my big fat head. Ow. Get up there. Oh, God. Of course, I just dropped the washer. Okay. One step at a time. One step at a time. Okay. Right. Now, theoretically... And I do mean theoretically. This should move enough this way to clear the side of the tunnel. Not so much. Not so much as to hit this thing. Which it doesn't. I think. I think we're okay. Just like the old Edelstahl is our friend as well. Come on. Lights flashing. That's a good sign. Right. Let's see if I can get myself in here now. Without ending up dead. It's always beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Alright. I don't know if the head cam is actually filming any of this or whether it's just just filming random things that have no relevance which would be a very Damien thing what we gotta do is boringly tighten up this fastener in here then I'm gonna rip this thing off my head We'll do a shaky cam, kind of an undercar uh, look around in here because to be fair, I think the GoPro is probably the best way to do that uh, just because of the wide angle and the shake resistance. I do have the gimbal musk, but the old gimbal musk wouldn't be much good down here, I suspect. So head cam dismounted. Here we have our former transmission tunnel, uh, which is now the home of our plate here, which has the two pumps. So there is a coolant pump for the um, drive unit and charger and all that that runs to these blue lines here and there's a smaller pump then 
for our heater uh, cabin heater system that's our Volkswagen heater uh, mounted here that's the Lynn bus controlled one variant or whatever you want to call it so all that's mounted on our aluminium plate which is uh, bolted up here in the um, where the automatic would have uh, bolted up this big pipe here it's a PTFE tube uh, that carries the high voltage lines uh, from the rear of the car up to the battery in the front of course our uh, over the top 3D printed bracket for holding that on here um, let's say the blue lines they bring the coolant to the rear uh, so sort of bring it to and from the rear of the car um, there's an adapter that 3D printed bracket there has an adapter it takes into 38 millimeter pipe size on the big BMW pump uh, down to the 19 uh, that we need for the, uh, the tube there. So that's the feed line which you see here, the return line from the rad then, or sorry the return to the rad going up to the top of the rad uh, is this guy here. So this is where all our kind of pumps and heater and all that kind of thing is going on at the minute. So let's move on up to the front. Hopefully I don't get to sit in any of these little coolant spills because I've been uh, filling the cooling system and getting it primed and dealing with a few leaks and all that. Usual good stuff. Um, so up here, hopefully now I get the light right on this. Let's see if I can squeeze myself in here so I can actually see it. So up here, uh, we've got our high voltage battery. So this is the back of it here. And you'll see the big um, connector for the main power. And up above it there, there's a smaller one, uh, which is this guy here, which is the power for the heater. Uh, so that's the rear of the battery uh, box that you will have seen outside the vehicle. Um, I tried to hate these connectors that I got from Tom, but they're they're pretty darn good actually. Uh, so I'm very happy with them. Uh, up around here, let's get a bit more light up here now for you to see. Hopefully. This is kind of what I call plum crazy in here. Um, this is where all of our pipe work um, for the heater and for the cooling system kind of come together. Now if I get you some light, let's see if I get you some light up there. Hopefully you'll be able to see in some fashion anyway. Now turning yourselves upside down uh, where the uh, the heater, the cabin heater pipes, there they with those blue pipes up there. Um, go up and then they come down and they go around and into our heater and that's our little water pump there for the heater system. Now we have a, a um, what's the name of it, a reservoir up the top and a bleeding line or a bleeding loop I should say. Uh, in there as well and then the big pump is in there for the for the drive unit cooling and that that's what that big um, so that big holes the big 38 millimeter holes here I like it more light so that's 38 millimeter holes it then has aluminium adapter or sorry that's a steel adapter that I machined actually bringing it down to 28 where it comes down um comes down then as 28 comes in underneath the battery and i've some more of these over the top 3d printed brackets holding it and then it goes up there and up and into the bottom of the rad so to see there is that's your output from the rad down through this pipe and into the uh the big bmw coolant pump and obviously then you're seeing the bottom of our stainless steel battery box those holes will be filled up so don't worry about that uh, you're seeing the main mount here which is this 100 by 100 box section 
uh, which is mounted up here onto the original engine mounting points on the front subframe and with our front mount then which picks up the original uh, radiator um, what's the name of it oh what do they call that the radiator not bracket cradle so we've got a bit of uh, stainless box section the old edel style again and made a new cradle for the rad there with some again 3d printed uh, mounts on there for that um, so that's the front our vehicle that's our battery box uh, what you got there is yeah so that's the bottom of the battery box and so on bottom of the rad and um, so if we were to turn myself around just try and give you one or two more looks in here I don't know again how this is gonna turn out but we'll try um, so that's our tunnel this is our uh, plate here and you can see you know all the way back down there then to the you can see all the way back down to the rear of the vehicle of our new conduited cables and of course 3d printed conduit clips um bringing our uh, cables to and from the rear of the car the gray one there is the drive unit and the black one is the um like the charger and the Chidemo port and that kind of thing. Got our wheels back on. Um, wheels are back on our wagon. So we're getting uh, we're getting quite near here now at this stage. All right. So head mounted top Panzer tour. Um, I think we're reasonable here. All right. So. Uh, Use the torch as a pointer, I suppose. Now, when you end up, might be problems. So, okay, battery box, I guess, is the big deal here. This is in um, Edelstahl, obviously, as you know, and um, we've got the high voltage connectors. Give me a bit more light. Got our high voltage connectors down the back where we were there looking, and there we have our. Um, low voltage connector here kind of for signals and contactors and stuff and that'll be coming up into the um in here into the e-box where our vcu will be, will be that's why we have all these wires here with my fancy heat shrink labels on them this is our little honda civic radiator um 3d printed mounts again of course uh so that's doing the main cooling um, for drive unit, charger, all that kind of thing. This reservoir here, this was the former, I guess, main coolant reservoir. That's doing our cabin heating system now. Uh, the proverbial, um, oh, forget the name of it now, some Opel Zafira, yeah, power steering pump that those are power steering and our power brakes in this vehicle uh, so not a whole lot to see here oh I did get the I guess they call it the vent the pressure vent installed on the front here before putting the battery in got our front um, front mount here I'll take the camera off my head let you look at my crappy um, uh, MIG welding on the old Edel shell um, so yeah this is in i guess at this point so really now to get the pans are going uh we've our like i say our heating and our cooling system are primed so really now to get the pans are going it's literally just putting the vcu into the e-box and starting to pull all this signal wiring and uh low voltage harness together basically in here and um, start bringing the car to life really so that's uh yeah that's about where the panzer is at the minute folks uh, but it was great to get that battery in really great to see it in there see it fitting uh, i did test it all out don't worry before hoisting it in here um so it did uh it does work um okay so that's it so 
there it is, folks. Another bout of professional filming at its uh, least finest. Um, hope you enjoyed that little tour. Um, we've got a lot of stuff, as I say, installed in the vehicle now, and we're down to just just the vcu and the signal wiring and pulling that all together and starting to power up um various systems in the vehicle um so that's hopefully going to be happening over the next few weeks i'd love to get the wheels turning before christmas even if we're not fully driving the car just to have the the hv powered up and wheels turning and maybe even charging that would be great also um so a little surprise on the way for the charging in, in terms of our gen 2 uh, tesla charger so i won't spoil that surprise for you uh, you'll have to wait for the next episode of um pinky and the brain uh so yeah the panzer is coming back to life slowly like everything with me, it's slow. But there we go. So, folks, as always, don't forget to dislike, unshare, unsubscribe from this stupid channel. Um, to save yourself the nausea, if nothing else. And um, links in the description to the various uh, bits and pieces that I think you might be interested in. Also put a link in there now to Jamie Jones's channel because he's got himself a BMW and he's putting a GS450H gearbox in it. So do tune into that. Um, and until next time then, um, happy head camera, head cameraing, head camming, head camming. <laughs>